Can the call of Ganga be explained? I heard the waters at the beginning of the satsang video, and it drew me here, despite a major illness. Ah, how beautiful. So our, our wonderfully dedicated Seva team takes these videos and cuts them question by question. So typically during our time together, we get through three questions, sometimes four questions approximately. But what they do is they cut each question and they put in a very sweet little few second image at the beginning of Mother Ganga flowing. And you know, it's a very, very sweet package they put together. And then they upload it on websites, on so you know, on YouTube and Facebook and whatnot. So what the question is referring to is that in the beginning of that satsang video, the the edited packaged version of it, it has the sound of Mother Ganga flowing in the beginning. The first image is the image of the flowing waters. And so the questioner says, I came here, I was drawn here, even despite physical illness, from simply hearing the sound of Ganga play for those few seconds in the beginning of that montage, the beginning of the satsang video. So how is that call explained? Well, divine magic is divine magic. And the dilemma when we try to start explaining is the tools that feel to us as acceptable tools of explanation are tools of this physical realm. They're the tools of science. They're the tools of our senses. But none of the beautiful magic that takes place in our life, none of the miracles that take place in our life, that takes place in our life can be explained by a law of physics or by a law of, you know, what it weighs or how tall it is. If we had natural laws to explain it, it wouldn't feel like a miracle. It wouldn't feel like magic. And for me, what this really is, is a very, very clear indication that there are natural laws that we're just not aware of. It's not that it's unknowable, unnameable, inconceivable, inscrutable magic. It's just that it doesn't fit in to our scientific, systematic explanations, which to me means those explanations are very shallow. For example, Take something as simple, as common, as universal as being in love. Okay. Can anybody explain that scientifically? How exactly does that happen? Like where, in, where exactly in your body does love happen? What makes you fall in love? I mean, you know. Some, some of you, if, I, if we go around and tell stories of being in love, somebody's going to have a story of the, you know, saw you across a crowded room, fell in love. Somebody's going to have the story of knew you for 25 years and didn't realize I was in love. Somebody's going to have a different story. Somebody's going to have the fell in love with you, then got married. Somebody will have the married and then fell in love or learn to love story. As many people as we have in this room, we're going to have different stories of love. But they're all valid. They're all real. Nobody would so much as insinuate that love is a figment of your imagination, that it's not hard science. So interestingly, we are we're okay 
with having love be outside the realm of science. But it seems to be pretty much the only thing that consistently and universally we're prepared to make that exception for. Because the minute that you start talking about God or spirituality or grace, the question comes up, well, how do I know? Prove it. Like, what does it look like? How much does it weigh? What, you know, how, do I, how do I see it? How do I know? Which, interestingly, are questions that we're, we're prepared to let go with love. Doesn't look like anything takes the form of whoever happens to be doing the loving. Love looks one way in me, a different way in you, a different way in you. It's like saying, what does electricity look like? Well, it looks like whatever the tool it's coming through is. It looks like light here. Looks like, feels like air from the fans. Sound from the microphone. There is no answer of what electricity looks like. If we put a, you know, a green filter over that spotlight, the light would be green. Well, has the electricity changed its form? Of course not. We've just put a green piece of cellophane on top of the lamp. But what the electricity looks like has changed color. And I mention all of this simply to start to create some wiggle room in our concept of how we know something's real and how far beyond the realm of what can be known with our five senses or can be weighed or measured, we're prepared to go. Because in order to understand things like the call of Ganga, you have to be prepared to take a step outside of that realm. And all, all we're asking you to do is be prepared to walk the same way you walk when you think about falling in love. People who aren't in love, it's one of the things that so many people are yearning for. Oh, I just want to find somebody. Nobody is saying, well, I don't know because, you know, I don't actually think love really exists. I think it's a figment of everybody's imagination. Even those who don't have it understand it exists. So with the call of Ganga, with the call of the divine, with any of the, the miracles, the magic, we have to simply be prepared to take the same step that we take as we're falling in love. It simply says, I have no idea what this looks like, how much this weighs, what law of nature this pertains to, but it feels better than anything in my whole life has ever felt, so I'm going to go with it. And that's, that's all it requires. So the call of Ganga, it's a magnet. It's, a, it's, a, it's the energy that pulls us back to our source. And yeah, here it exists in the waters of Mother Ganga that are the form of the Mother Goddess. There are people in the world for whom it exists in so many other places in the world. People of other religions, people of other cultures, people of other races. There are many, many holy places in the world that call people from the inside. I'm sure if we delve into the, the lives of the masters, the mystics, the sages, the saints of all the world's religions, we're going to find stories. And even the devotees, the awakened devotees, are going to find stories of people being called 
to so many different holy places because it's the presence, it's the presence of the divine that calls you. Not with words, but literally, literally with magnetic energy, the same way that the North Pole calls the hands on a compass. How does that happen? Well, all right, we can say magnetism. But that's just a word. It's just a word. We could come up with a word for the call of Ganga, and then we'd have a way to explain it. Magnetism is just a way of explaining a phenomenon that exists. So is gravity. Okay, things fall to the earth. Why? Let's call it gravity. Compass points to the North Pole and the Northern Hemisphere, to the South Pole and the Southern Hemisphere. Why? Let's call it magnetism. It's the relationship of the moon to the ocean. Let's call it a magnetic pull. But th these are just, they're just terms, they're words. They've got different terms and words in different languages. I've given you the English. The term for this in the spiritual community is grace. It's, that's what you call it. You call it grace. Like what the North Pole does is called magnetism. What the Earth does is called gravity. They're all energies that pull you toward them. So if you want to call it the magnetism of Ganga, go ahead and call it that. If you want to call it the gravity of Ganga, go ahead and call it that. Really doesn't matter what we call it. What we know is it exists. The North Pole was doing its magnetic thing long before anybody ever built the first compass or understood how it worked. Gravity was operational before the apple fell on Newton's head. Before we had words for it. This grace is here. It's called coming home, coming back to the self. And in today's, today's day and age, it's so hard to come back to the self in what most of our worlds and lives look like. And so Ganga pulls you. She pulls you here to come back to yourself. to that divinity within the self and to her holy banks where, yeah, things, things function a bit differently than they do in other parts of the world. Again, how do you explain it? We explain it by grace. Quantum physics talks about how what happens to matter in different types of gravity. I'm not a quantum physicist, but I, I, I love the implications of it. So you take something like a black hole. Well, they'll tell you that in a black hole, matter, and I forget the numbers, I forget the statistics, but it's this huge amount of matter. So you could take you know, all the couches of the world, all the tables of the world, all the things of the world that feel very, very, very solid and that they'd all, they'd all fit on like the tip of a teaspoon. And yet, we also know by laws of physics that matter is, is never actually destroyed or created. So what happens to it? Well, nothing happens to it except the energy of that black hole does something to the matter that without dissolving it or destroying it, Somehow, that which occupied lots and lots and lots of space no longer does. I can't tell you any more than that about how it works because I don't understand. But for me, what it does is it makes us realize, wow, there's all these incredible 
powers of energy, ways that laws of nature function differently in different places, in different magnetic fields and areas, even right here on planet Earth. How does it work? I don't know. But we know, we know it exists. And so the fact that in this spiritual vortex, you could say, in this place of very, very high and special spiritual vibrations, frequency, literally, things function differently. Things happen differently. How? I don't know. But we, we take all of that and we call it grace. Like the scientists call it energy or gravity or, you know, pressure or pull or whatever words they use. We call it grace. But if you prefer a different word, don't worry. Any word is fine. What matters is it happens, it's real. And whether it hits you through listening to the sound of Ganga in a few second montage before a satsang video on YouTube or Facebook, or it happens to you through going on the internet and seeing something that says Rishikesh, or having it come to you in a dream or in a meditation, or on the advice of a friend, or to me on the page I happen to open to in a several hundred page guidebook, Rishikesh, okay. However it happens, allow yourself, allow yourself to be called. You never, you never see iron filings saying, yeah, make me, forget it, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go. You know, I, I'm sure in theory they could, but one would wonder what the point was. If here there was this incredible magnetic pull from the North Pole and you happen to be an iron filing, why, why would you not go along with the magnet? And so in the same way, when we, when we feel that pull, rather than second-guessing ourselves, you know, the iron, the iron never wonders, well, God, do you think that's meant for me? Maybe that, was, maybe that was meant for the guy next door to me. Maybe, maybe it wasn't really a pull to the North Pole. Maybe it was a, you know, pull somewhere else. But no. Where it's, where it's pulling you, when you feel that, you're clearly being pulled. So allow it. Know that there's an order. There is a science behind it, even if we don't have the words yet for it, even if we don't yet know how it works. It's better to abide by it, in the same way that it's much better to abide by the laws of gravity, even if you don't know what they're called, right? I mean, we don't walk off buildings. We know, I'm going to fall to the earth, regardless of whether I understand how gravity works or not. We don't, we don't all go onto tops of buildings and wonder, well, God, I wonder if this applies to me, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I don't have to follow everybody. Yeah, everybody else is falling. I'm, maybe I'm not going to fall. Who says I have to fall? I'm an independent thinker. I'm free. Nobody can make me plummet to the earth. Well, yeah, gravity can. And so when you feel, when you feel a pull that's, that's that strong, rather than second guessing it, rather than fighting against it, see what it's, see what it's there for. Because gravity applies to everyone. The magnetic pull applies to all of the iron. But not everyone gets the call to Ganga. That's, that's not a call that everyone gets. 
And so if you've been someone who's gotten it, clearly you've gotten it for a reason. 